This is the fourth and final video in my series all about 6x17 photography. Up until this point, we've been talking about technical stuff. Cameras and lenses and focal lengths and resolutions and all that fun stuff. Now we're finally going to dive into the artistic side of it. Composition as it pertains to 6x17 photography. Now when it comes to talking about technical stuff like lenses and cameras and whatever, it's relatively easy to talk about because well, it's all pretty much black and white, verifiable, facts, figures, stats, and you can kind of look up whether I'm right or wrong on this stuff. But when it comes to the artistic side of things, whenever we're talking photography and we get into composition, it gets a little trickier because composition is super subjective. It largely boils down to taste and style, and there's no necessarily right or wrong answers on how to do things. So. As you watch this video, just keep that in mind. You know, I'm of course approaching this from my own personal experiences with 6x17, how I like to approach my compositions, how I like to frame things, but that doesn't mean you should do it the same way, and I'm certainly not gonna cover every last little compositional trick in the book in this one little itty bitty video. But that in mind, let's move forward. So when it comes to composition with 6x17, I have two words for you. Expansiveness and confinement. And these two words are really going to be the overarching narrative, the core, the foundation of all the compositional things I'm going to talk to you about today. Because 6x17 photography, and really any panoramic photography, is unique in that because the frame is so long on one dimension and so short on the other dimension, we get the benefits and drawbacks of both expansiveness and confinement in the same frame. In other words, you can create a sense of expansiveness and a sense of confinement in the same photograph. So let's take a look at how these two things incorporate into composition for 6x17. With expansiveness, let's start with the most obvious. It's great for highlighting that never-ending landscape feel. So if you're faced with a scene, faced with a landscape where it feels like it just goes on forever, 6x17 photography is a great way to highlight that. Because of the long dimension, you can really draw attention to the fact that it's just going on forever. I use this all the time in my desert photography because the desert is a landscape that feels like it just goes on forever. And in fact, maybe the reason I like shooting the desert so much is partly because I like shooting 6x17 so much. It just works really well with these types of landscapes that don't have a whole lot of height to them. You know, there's not real tall peaks and real tall trees. It's a landscape that's low and goes on for a very, very long time. 6x17 photography encapsulates that well. It complements it. So that's one of the reasons I really like 6x17 photography in my nature work. But it's not just traditional nature landscapes. I use it in my urban city scenes all the time. Something like this, the panoramic format really helped me highlight the feel of this junkyard going on forever. You know, it seems like it could go on to the left and right for a long time because that 6x17 frame cuts out the foreground, cuts out a bunch of sky, and highlights the horizontal nature of the subject. And that's what I wanted to highlight in the scene is make it feel like that junkyard was going on forever, left to right. Same thing with this picture of the pallet yard. So 6x17 photography can be used to make a subject feel like it expands left and right for a very long distance, even though it may not actually. You know, this junkyard and this pallet yard, they're very contained lots, they're not huge. But by using this panoramic cropping, I can make it seem like it kind of goes on forever. And then the viewer, who's never been there, just gets a feeling that, man, this is a huge junkyard or this is a huge pallet yard. So that's never-ending landscapes. Pretty obvious use for 6x17 photography. 6x17 is also great for creating a sense of isolation on a subject by utilizing some negative space around it. And negative space, by the way, is just a term to describe parts of a photo or a painting or a graphic or whatever that there's not a whole lot going on. It's just kind of empty space and it serves a purpose, but it's not really where the bulk of the interest is for the photo. So on a picture like this, 
you'll see I have a lot of negative space around my quote unquote main subject, which is the billboard. I say quote unquote because yes, the billboard I guess is my main subject, but really the whole scene is my main subject. Uh, the hill is included in the picture for a reason, which we'll talk about. But the billboard, there's a lot of emptiness around it. We have this big hill off to the left that's dark and there's not a bunch of detail and of course all the sky around it. So I utilize the negative space here to create a sense of isolation on that billboard to make it feel like it's all by its lonesome in this big open expanse. Now I want to show you this picture cropped without the negative space. So you can see here this is more how like a beginner photography book would tell you to frame this shot. Make sure your subject fills the frame. Don't have too much wasted space. You know, kind of those basic tips of just zoom in tighter, make sure your subject's filling the frame. That's this shot here. And I'll be honest with you, this is a pretty boring photo. Uh, it's just a picture of a billboard. It's not really telling a bigger story. It's not really commentating on anything. It's just a picture of a billboard. Now it's not terrible. The light's cool. The timing uh, in the evening is nice and whatever, but Framing wise, this is not what I wanted. Going back to the original, you'll see having all this negative space off to the left, making the subject very small in the frame with all this uh, emptiness around it, really makes it seem like it's isolated in this much larger landscape. And that's specifically what I wanted to show in this photo because what struck me about this scene is the creepiness and weirdness of these big cut out caricatures of Morning Joe news team anchors with their chiclet teeth smiling at you with the spotlight on them against this dark, untouched, natural landscape. Now, if you want to get real, you know, tobacco pipe and ascotty about it, we can pontificate about how this commentates on the effect of. Uh, modern society on the natural landscape with these uh, news crews smiling at you all creepy about to freak you out about all the craziness going on in the world when there's this big beautiful landscape behind you and there's really nothing to freak out about but let's not go down that rabbit hole the point is negative space was used here to create a sense of isolation on my subject so this is a great way to kind of combine that sense of a never-ending expansive landscape with one subject that stands out in stark contrast to it. It's a great way to make that singular subject stand out even stronger against the contrast of the open expansive backdrop behind it. So this is a great way, especially if you have contrast between light and dark or different colors or whatever, to make the subject feel like it's standing all on its own. I really like to incorporate this in my dusk and dawn scenes of buildings because having a lit building against a bunch of dark negative space of that dark dawn or dusk light really makes the building stand out even more. So creating a sense of isolation for a subject with negative space. 6x17 can also be great for highlighting symmetry. So looking at a few examples here, I've obviously placed the subject in the center of the frame to exaggerate the symmetry. And you might be thinking, well, 6x17 isn't what accomplished that. The building is symmetrical. If you shot it in just 4x5 or something, it would still be symmetrical. True, and here's that, but to me, it loses a little bit of the symmetry. Now, I suspect it's because having this symmetrical subject against the backdrop, which isn't symmetrical, again, that contrast highlights what you're trying to show. So having symmetry against non-symmetry makes the symmetry stand out that much stronger. Did the same thing on this. So a symmetrical cactus against a non-symmetrical background, if we were to frame it in just four by five, then you still get symmetry, but it's not popping out like it is on this. Having the symmetry in the foreground against the background with all that extra image to the left and right highlights that symmetry more. And similar thing here. So cropped much more to a four by five. It's still symmetrical, but this just seems to highlight the symmetry of that particular building that much better. And if you've watched a lot of my videos, you know what a fiend I am for symmetry. I love highlighting it. 
and I'm sure that's a lot of the reason I'm drawn to 6x17 in the first place. It's great for highlighting symmetry. Another use for expansiveness is it can help you tell the story of the scene around a subject. This might be my favorite use for 6x17 is when you go to photograph a building, sure, you could just photograph the building nice and tight, but I like that 6x17 allows me to incorporate things around the building to give me a sense of where it is, what's going on around it, what's daily life like on this particular evening or this particular morning. Like this one here, including the stuff off to the right, like the weird missile in the lawn of that building next door. That's an American Legion building, by the way. That's why they have a missile out front. Little things like that can be incorporated into a picture of a laundromat to tell a further story of what the environment around this building is like. This also gives a sense of how quiet it is when I took this photo, because the streets are empty, there's no one standing out there, and 6x17 allowed me to include all that extra stuff to show you how quiet it is. There's a missile next door, things like that. So I really like 6x17 for these more urban scenes because it really helps me tell the larger story of what's going on around my main subject, rather than just zooming in tight on the one thing that drew me in the first place. So that's expansiveness. Very useful in 6x17 with that wide frame. But how about confinement, the vertical dimension? Well, with confinement, that partly gives you the cinematic effect, at least in my opinion, because we know movies are widescreen. We're used to that uh, short vertical dimension and that long horizontal dimension. So just the fact that it has that short vertical dimension, I think contributes to the cinematic look you see in photos sometimes. And because of this vertical confinement, foregrounds are less exaggerated. So even with an ultra wide angle lens, like if you use a 72 millimeter on six by 17, it's crazy wide. On any other format, that would give you this massive foreground that's really just dominating the photo. But because of the wide dimension, that tends to overpower whatever's going on in the foreground. You're, the viewer is really just focusing on how wide it is and the foreground might be interesting, it might be there, it might be noticeable, but it's not, the crux of the entire photo, like you would see on a two by three aspect ratio or four by five. So foregrounds aren't really what's gonna carry the photo on six by 17. And this is why I find myself composing much more for the middle ground and background when I'm doing six by 17. Because not having such a big foreground and also not having a ton of uh, sky up above your subject, you end up really isolating the middle ground and background. And I've grown to actually really like that. I started off, really um, dependent on a good foreground. All my landscapes really needed a good foreground, otherwise I couldn't make a good photo. But nowadays, I'm much more drawn to the middle ground and background of scenes. And 6x17 helps me highlight those things. And this sense of confinement on the vertical dimension can also make vertical subjects seem much more imposing or bigger in the frame. So we'll look at plenty of examples of that. Starting with this one, and this composition is a great example of how on this one by three panoramic aspect ratio, you get a sense of expansiveness and a sense of confinement in the same frame, both contributing to the sense of how big this subject is. So on the horizontal dimension, of course, we have that sense of expansiveness to show just how big this tree is because it's spanning the entire length of this long frame. So you get a feel for how big it is. But then having that short confined vertical dimension clips the top of the tree so abruptly that you can't help but wonder, damn, how tall is this thing? If it's filling the frame this much, that thing must be huge. So having the expansiveness and the confinement in the same frame both helped me communicate how damn big this tree was. Now, by the way, I tried scouting compositions where you could see the top of the tree, a little further back, down the street, whatever, so you could see the top of the tree, and I thought that would make it feel bigger, because you're seeing it goes so far up into the sky. But every time I scouted a composition like that, I found that it just made the tree seem smaller. So having it framed like this in the one by three aspect ratio, I think was much more effective at communicating how big this tree was. And on this composition, we get the horizontal expansiveness, giving that sense of this field of flowers kind of going on forever. 
but the vertical confinement makes it feel much more intimate, makes me these trees dotted throughout the landscape feel a little bigger, a little more imposing, and that combination of expansiveness and confinement makes for a much more unique composition. The horizontal expansiveness here works well with the expansiveness of the desert, kind of communicates that part of the message, and then the vertical confinement makes you feel much more enclosed in this building. Same thing here, the horizontal dimension, you get that expansiveness of the desert landscape going on forever, but the vertical confinement, you're just getting uh, the train clipped, a little bit of the foreground, and that makes it feel much tighter and much more intimate, makes you feel like you're right there. Great for doing kind of detail shots too, because you get the expansiveness on the horizontal dimension, but the vertical dimension really lends itself well to kind of detail shots, um, smaller subjects. Uh, six by 17 can be great for even macro work. I don't do a ton of it just because I tend to be more drawn to the uh, landscapes and the uh, urban scenes, but that shortened vertical dimension can be really good at getting rid of all the stuff you don't need and just highlighting the small subject. So that's really what I love about 6x17 photography is you're getting both the expansiveness and the confinement in the single frame. And um, you can communicate things with each of those dimensions separately. Now a few other things to keep in mind with 6x17 photography and composing for it. There are certain subjects that are just great for 6x17 and it's obvious as soon as you look at it. It's great for subjects that you'd kind of naturally view left to right, you know, roads going left to right, trails, uh, subjects that just happen to be horizontally oriented. I find buildings all the time where I look at it and I just think, yeah, that's a six by 17 shot. It's like they designed the building for a one by three aspect ratio. So something like this, obviously an expansive landscape where the interest is left to right. You know, if you were standing there with your own two feet, you'd probably be looking at everything like this. You'd just be going back and forth, looking at the sky, looking at the trees. You wouldn't be doing a whole lot of... So you don't need the vertical dimension. That's a subject that works really well with the horizontal dimension. Mountain ranges, obviously, left to right, they're spanning the scene, but there isn't as much vertically in this particular composition. Buildings, you know, if I'm shooting a strip mall or something like this, this can be a great way to uh, include the entire subject without having a bunch of extraneous asphalt in the foreground or a bunch of sky above it. Like I said, certain subjects, they're just begging for a one by three aspect ratio. Now you can of course do vertical compositions. Um, I get asked about this every so often and I have done vertical compositions. I'm just not hugely drawn to them. Uh, they just don't really grab me. But yeah, if you have a real tall subject, six by 17 oriented vertically can be a great way to capture it. And if you're doing kind of a more traditional landscape, a vertical six by 17 shot gives you a ton of foreground. So if you do have a great foreground that you really want to highlight in a scene, six by 17 oriented vertically can be a great way to do it. Now, another thing I like about six by 17, as opposed to maybe just like stitched panoramas is there's less distortion. Straight lines stay straight. If you do a stitched pano or even like a Noblex panoramic camera, you end up looking down left and right on your subject and so straight lines don't stay straight, they end up bending. So if you're doing a lot of buildings, architecture, street scenes like I do, being able to keep lines undistorted is huge for me. Uh, especially if you're using a view camera like I do because you can keep everything squared up to the planes of the building and then everything will stay horizontal left to right, verticals will stay vertical, and you don't get any distortion you would get from doing a stitched multiple shot pano with a uh, digital or film. And one final thing I wanna leave with you on composition, and this applies to all composition, not just six by 17. What you exclude is as important as what you include. So I've often told people, especially in my classes, that composition, is really an exercise in eliminating things. Getting stuff out of the frame that's not gonna help your story, it's not gonna help your communication. Now I don't have a ton of examples to show you because I don't frame up shots, including things that I don't want, so I can't really show you this thing should, shouldn't be there, but I do have an example here I wanna show you that'll demonstrate the point. So this frame here, this is how I want it composed. I'm gonna show you what it looked like with just a little more image that I cropped out later. So you see there's a little more off to the right. And if you look at this area right here, to me, 
This kills the story that I'm trying to tell here. This kills the communication. Because what I'm trying to tell here is these pallets go on forever. They might go on for a mile left and right. I'm really trying to highlight the repetition of these stacks of pallets. And that little gap right there completely robs it. Because you see all these stacks of pallets like, oh yeah, that's going on forever. And then it suddenly cuts off. That tells you, the viewer, that's the end of the yard. So you get a sense of, okay, this is a singular confined space. It doesn't go on forever. It, it stops right here. So it really robs from that communication. So by eliminating that little gap off to the right, I can effectively create that sense of this pallet yard going on forever. So those are all my thoughts on composition for 6x17 photography. And that concludes the four-part series. That's everything I know. That's all I know about 6x17 photography. I hope you found the videos useful. I know there's a lot of competition out there when it comes to getting information about 6x17 photography. It's like everybody's doing it. But I appreciate you coming to me. And uh, if you did find these videos useful and you want to help keep the lights on around here, or at least buy me a beer, you can check the links in the description. But whatever the case, thanks for watching. I do hope you enjoyed it. And I'll see you next time.